Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's an honor to present our midterm demo on behalf of the team. My name is Raymond. I'll be guiding you through the overview of the project today, covering the key aspect and the progress we've made right now. Um, however, for the specific, uh, specific features that each team member has contributed to, I'll be inviting them to introduce their own work uh, in more details. So um, let's get started. Um, because uh, since we are the first time to introduce our project, uh, please allow me to do some uh, introduction now about our project background. The project mark is convinced that uh, address the growing demand of scale online education platform. Uh, with online learning become more and more popular, traditional situation in independent education requires uh, uh, a robust system to handle large scale diversity of audience. So that's why our uh, system exists. So um, to talk about our teammates, uh, our team is structured into two main groups. Uh, developer focus on the front end and back end and the business analysis ensure our meets our user needs. Uh, we're following an ideal, ideal workflow with a daily stand up and the spring planning sessions to keep our project on track. So uh, our system architecture is divided into two systems, uh, each using a similar tech stack, but with the different focuses. Both systems empl uh, employs uh, Node.js and Express for the back end and a Re React along with the Net.js for the front end. The first system is primarily um, dedicated to back end services and an administration task. While the second system, we call it front-end system, is strongly faced about delivering the stimulus and experiences. Uh, the separation allows us to keep the functionality of each system distinct, make the overall architecture more organized and the feature distribution clearer. So uh, this is the main part of our uh, presentation. The backend system is a crucial for the operation handling the user course and the teacher management. Role-based access to the contro controls uh, is used to about talking about to protect the sensitive data, ensure only the authorities the user can access the specific features. So um, to talk about the specific the features here, we have six developers, each rep responsible for the developing a different feature within the system. So to start with, please let me introduce Frank, who has been working on the user management features. Uh, Frank, please. Uh, hello, my name is Frank, and I'm responsible for develop developing the user feature. And here's the uh, database design of my part, uh, which listed the basic and important information of our system. So it includes the ID, which is self-increment, and also the username, password, email address, age, gender, avatar, nickname, uh, this important information. And also uh, we have access, uh, which is actually the permission for the accounts. We have three types of accounts, like admin, student, and teacher. And also we list um, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, um, item called active, which shows the current status of the account. Next page, please. And here are some of the API functions uh, I already implemented, um, which is the mainly the basic crude, like add new users, get all user data, and update users by ID and delete users by ID. And I also listed some of the um, planned API functions, which will be updated in the future. Mainly is um, by uh, getting the data according to like different um, item name or category, like the get, get the user by name or by ID, and get the user by like t according to t uh, with, um, its role, like teacher or student. And um, now I'll uh, hand it over to Lee to continue with the teacher feature section. Uh, Raymond, can you? Uh, thank you. 
Hello everyone, my name is Li, uh, and today I will be presenting the features of the teacher management system that I work on. So firstly, let's look at the database design. The teacher table contains essential fields such as ID, which is the primary key, and it, in, it is auto-increment, and then it's user ID, which is the foreign key links to the user's table, and then it's the teacher specialization description. Additionally, it checks the higher date and higher status of each teacher. Moving forward, we are also considering adding some new fields like mobile number and linking link to enhance the data we store for each teacher. Uh, next page, please. Next, I will cover the API functions. So we have five uh, basic API endpoints right now, which covers the crude functions and operations for the teacher management. So the first one is add teacher. It, is allow, uh, it allows us to save a teacher's information to the database. And then is the get teachers. This will retrieve a paginated, paginated list of all teachers. And then it's get teacher by ID. It fetches specific teacher details based on their ID. And then it's the update teacher by ID, which allows updating a teacher's information. And then the last one is the delete teacher by ID, which removes the teacher from the database by their ID. And I also have some uh, planned API functions for updating and refining in future, uh, such as name-based teacher search. It is to support finding teachers by their name with a search function. And as well as a mobile number search, which allows search which allows searching for teachers using using their mobile number. And the last one is a high status filtering, which will implement API, API filtering to return only teachers with an active higher status. So this is my part, please. Uh, move into the next next one, please. Thank you. Uh, Russell, are you there? Yeah. Hi. Hello, so um, I'm with, I'm responsible for the uh, course uh, category uh, module. Um, this is the uh, database, and for the database design, we have uh, um, ID, category name and level, parent ID, and notes. <laughs> nice. Okay. Thank you. Um, for the API function, we have uh, uh, five uh, API. The first one, um, edit course category, and um, save course category to the database, and then um, get a course category. We choose a paginated list of all course category. Um, the third is um, get course category by ID, fetch specific course category details. And then uh, update course category by ID, update specific courses, course category information. And the last one is uh, delete course category by ID, uh, remove a course category from database by ID. Okay. Next. Okay, thank you. Um, to talk about my feature, the course management, uh, which stands to due to its role based functionality. Because different permissions are granted into students, teachers, and admins, so each user type has access to the different features, making the system both flexible and secure. So, actually, additionally, my feature is close to connect with the work of other team members, acting an extension of their functionalities. So, I think uh, that requires the access in modifying and deleting data across the multiple database which demands a comprehensive and well-thought-about well design. So uh, the next page. On the back end, to ensure the seamless integration with other features, I incorporated multiple foreign keys into the for a course table design. This allows my course management feature to quickly establish connection with other functionalities around the system. Uh, here are some of the key Backend features we implement, I impl implemented, like the post, get, put, delete, the most uh, common CURD uh, option, uh, op uh, optionals, but it uh, also works in other functions. 
the next one um, is the talk is about the front end uh, design. It's considered about many course management application interact with the features. I'm working to consolidate with the functionality into single comprehensive and dis a dashboard because this approach will stimulate and management task our users, even the teachers. Since the teacher are primarily the users of this feature, I'm focused on design the layout with interface that uh, particularly user friendly for teachers, ensuring that courses management experience aligns with their needs and the preferences. And that's all my uh, functions. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Raymond. And uh, hi, everyone. My name is Carol, and uh, I'm responsible for the cross schedule feature. I, I will be working you through the K API functions and the underlying data database design. So let's start by looking at the core API functions that power the course schedule feature. So first is get course schedule by ID. So the, it is very important for retrieving the detailed information about a particular course schedule. Uh, the next is get all courses schedules. This is useful for viewing and managing multiple schedules at once. And then add course schedules. Um, it, this one in, enables us to add new schedules to the database. Update course schedule by ID. Um, this function allows us to update in the, the details of an existing course schedule by its ID. The last one is delete course ID. Uh, this is very essential for keeping the scheduled data clean and updated. Then let's dive into the database design that supports these API functions. So we have a table called cross schedule, which is structured as follows. Um, the first one is ID, which is the primary key for the table, and then the start date. This column stores the start date and the time of the course schedule. The end date, similarly, the, this one holds the end date and time for the course schedule. And the course ID, which is foreign key, and also the is published. These Boolean columns indicate whether the course schedule is published and visible to the users. Um, so when a user or admin interacts with the course schedule, whether it is creating a new one or updating an existing one, or simply just viewing a list of schedules, they are effectively engaging with these API functions. Um, so that's my part. I will now hand it over to Victors, who are talking about the comment features. Thank you. Thanks, Carol. Hello everyone, my name is Victor and I'm responsible for designing the course comment feature in the MOOC project. Now let me introduce what I have done regarding the backend management system. Firstly, I have created a table named course comments and confirmed several attributes containing the ID and the auto, auto increment ID, the comment content, the comment time, which records the content and time of the comment. Besides, there are two foreign keys, the course ID, which is relevant to the courses table, and user ID, which is relevant to the user table. Then I have designed five web API functions, uh, five common API functions related to CIUD operations. And as you can see, they have been tested through Slack UI. The first function is adding the comments to the database, and the user can fill in these attributes mentioned above, then the information will be saved in the database. The second variable function I create is getting the common list in pagination. Users can select the page and page size to present the list they need. The other one is to get the specific comment by typing their ID. The next API function is to update the specific comment with the new common content. Users can type their ID and modify the content within that ID. And the last function is to um, delete the specific comment. When user types the ID, then the relevant information will be removed from the database. And this is what I have done regarding this project. Now I think it's time to hand it over to our captain, Riman. Okay, thank you, Victor. 
Um, besides the backend system, uh, this is slides introduced about the second system we design, the front end display system. Although our current focus is primarily being on the backend management system, uh, this front end system is equally important. Uh, it provides a modular and clear structure that will guide us to the future development, ensuring the considerate and the easy of use. This system um, complements the backend uh, management system too, together forming a comprehensive and user friendly platform. The, fr uh, the front end display system offers the key features like course browsing, uh, enrollment, and user dashboard. But together, I think uh, these two systems create an efficient and integrated platform that enhance the overall user experience. To talk about development tools, we utilize a various of development tools such as VS Code, a MySQL Workbench, and Figma, which allows us to efficiently collaborate and maintain the quality of our work throughout the project. And the next uh, is talking about challenges and solutions. During the development, we do face a lot of changes like design duplication and integration complexity. However, um, by streamlining our design and adopting the Microsoft microservices architectures, we overcame these issues, ensuring the secure, scalable, and optimized system. To talk about what have we done right now, uh, our development followed by the structured timeline. System architecture was comply completed in the first three weeks. Core features were developed in the following uh, four weeks. So, as so far, we finished half of weeks, and the initial testing was conducted from the weeks eight to eleven. So, uh, at last, we understand that as the beginners developing the project as a complex and innovate, innovative is, can be quite challenging for us. But completing these basic functionalities has been a significant achievement for us. So uh, if, in, if you have any suggestions or questions, we would greatly appreciate your feedback. It would be very uh, important experience for us. And that's the end of our presentation. Thank you.